that we've covered before. Let's say we are, we, we are asked to write an assembly language program that prompts a user to enter two integers, right? So you enter maybe zero and one, or negative one and two. And if the first number is, is less than the second number, what you do is you print first number is less than second. If the second number is less than the first number, you print second number is less than first. Very simple thing. Question is, how do we go about implementing this? You notice that using the, I don't know if people can see here. Can you? No. Don't know what you just said there, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm speaking on behalf of uh, the people can't, that can't. <laughs> Is this good enough? So, so if we were to, to, to use our normal implementation, right? Uh, I hope this thing is record, recording. If we were to, to use our normal implementation of coming up with a program that just compares two numbers, you notice that it's a very trivial thing here. We start off with, uh, with, uh, with a data section where we specify, we, we prompt a user because we need to prompt a user to enter the two numbers. So we prompt a user to enter number one, we prompt a user to enter number two, right? Um, and then we need to define, as part of the data section, also the strings, the two strings that are going to be printed once we execute our code. So if the first number is less than the second number, then we wish to essentially print this string here in line number five, right? Otherwise, we shall print the line, uh, the, 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 the string in line number six here, right? Again, uh, in the main method here, this is second nature. What we do is, the first thing we do is we say, we're going to prompt the user, which is why we're printing first number here, right? So essentially we're saying, we shall, we shall print this text here. Enter first number, right? After the user enters, uh, well, we print that string, we read input from the user an integer because the user is supposed to enter the integer, which is why we're using system call code number five here, between line number 15 and 16. Afterwards, what do we do? We're saying move, because we know that once the user enters the integer, let's say I type in two, that number will be in V0, so we shall copy, and then number 18, we shall copy what is in V0, the value the user has specified into register eight. And then we prompt the user for the second number. The prompt is the same as what we've done before. What do we do? We say print the text associated with var second number. Essentially, we're saying, print this, enter second number. Once the user uh, sees that piece of text, or once we print out that piece of text, we say in line number 24 and 25, we say read the second number from the user, which is why we're using system call code five, right? Once we read the value the user types in the second number, we must move it to a safe register. So the value that the user has entered is in V0, move it to nine. <laughs> and then what we're doing in line number 29 and 30 is we're saying, if the first number the user has entered is less than the second number branch two, the branch named first less than label, right? Effectively, we're gonna go here and just print that piece of text that says first number is less than second number. Or first less than second, nobody cares, right? But if this is not executed, if it so happens that eight is greater than nine, like if the user enters five and then they enter zero, then we know that this line here CPU will come here and check, oh, well, but eight is not, is, is not less than nine, so what I'll do is I'll just continue the next instruction. Comes here and discovers, oh, the second number is less than the first number, and so I shall branch to second less than label, right? This is line number 42 all the way up to 48. Which point I just print second number is less than first. Right? But you will notice something very peculiar here. What we are doing in line number 11 up to 13 is the same as what we are doing in line number 20 up to 22. Hmm? Sorry? Since the sequence is repeating. Yeah, yes. The sequence is repeating. 
would we have to use the Japanese so that we don't repeat the same? Yes, that's that's the motivation here actually. Saying instead of us doing this, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, uh, I'm exiting. Why don't I just use a procedure, write a procedure that just prints a string for me and replace this with the jump and link to the name of the procedure, right? Same thing for exit, I suppose. Uh, instead of, alternatively, instead of saying, uh, using this unconditional branch to say B and then exit label, we can just convert this code fragment into a procedure and then wherever we have B, space exit label, we shall have jump and link, exit label, whatever a, a procedure name we come up with. So as long as you have one of the procedures, that's all that matters, that you have one of the procedures, let's say that the instructions of the less than must at least be there, and the instructions of the exit label yes. must, must be there, rather than us repeating them. Each time we want to execute that program, we go to jump and link then to be executed from the instructions that we already have. Yes, that is the motivation. This is a huge takeaway. Imagine a situation where you have a, a program, right? That has 1,000 lines of code and you're redoing these things over and over again. And again, I'll take you back to this high level thing I was talking about here, right? It's, it, what else is there? There's so, there so many things that are common. Like if I want to compute, oh, what's the power, or what's five raised to the power two, or two raised to the power five? I can do this. I can do this in a high-level programming language because there's already code fragments that exist for me to do this. So I don't have to redo this over and over again. This is a power reading of procedures. But uh, I digress. Uh, we're not here to talk about uh, inbuilt functions in Python. The, the, the use, the potential use case for this is limitless, right? Especially once you start uh, web programming, hopefully, is it third year or something? I don't know. Um, you realize that. Uh, you know, uh, designing your programs in this way results in very effective code. Because you don't have to redo things that have already been done. You implement some cool function, all you have to do is ship it, ship it to your classmates and say, I have implemented this, you can use this, this is how you go about using it. If this was not possible, you'd have to implement uh, how to gracefully exit from scratch. Go figure. Okay. Uh, Yes, sir. Before you proceed, I will talk about the first quarter of the application. Why? I didn't get what you said why you were putting two columns on the first statement and the first. When? The previous quarter of the application. This. Why? After the end of the first name. Yeah, the full column. No space. Then I didn't get what you said why the full column. I mean, this is just a, usually when you're writing an interactive program, visually the user will know that, you know, when you have a full column, the user knows subconsciously, say, I must provide input. It's like, you can, you can do this if you want. I don't know if you've seen this in programs. This. Yeah. Just like when I'm using my, this interpreter here in Python, it's the same thing. Why do, does it have uh, three greater than signs? It's just uh, to showcase that, uh, you know, this is like an interactive sort of application, and so it's expecting input. So in a No, 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 no. This is just, it has nothing to do with that. You might as well just remove it then, number. It has nothing to do with that. It's, it's just uh, anything that appears in, in, in quotes, in most programming languages, uh, NIPS is no exception. It's stuff that is user-defined. So the, the CPU or the QTS will print it verbatim, the way it is. Right. I don't know why they are running away now. Is it uh, today's class is boring? Hey. Sir, I've noticed something. They're all lining. Line number 11. Yeah, compared to the other one. Okay. Yeah, which is the JR. Which, no, there's no JR here yet. Ford. Ford? The other one. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, so here's the thing, right? We had this, um, we are saying we have this, we have this problem. The normal way in which we've been implementing or trying to provide a solution to this problem is this, which is, which is effectively what we are looking at here. 
this is the normal way we've been doing it, but we're saying there's a better way. And the better way is it involves using procedures, which is why the stuff that comes after has uh, the jump and link and the J app. Yeah, so we don't have a system that, you know, we just want to print the string. We don't like force this thing in code number four, but you just load the string into a register. No, no, you do though. You do that within the procedure, and I'll showcase just now an example. Yes? So it's like we make a procedure, then we label it, and then we use that label. Yes. Yes. Can that be like with the other, with the, the way we used to do it? Can we load the string, mm. then call the system call number four? Can we do it the other way and like twice? No, no, I don't think I get what you're saying. How? <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, for people, uh, he's written it down and he wants me to read it. No, C can I read that afterwards? Uh, I'll read it. Let's chat afterwards. I mean, hopefully, it will make sense by the time we are done. Yeah, I think it will. So, so here's the thing, right? You notice that there's a, there's a possibility of us kind of factoring out common functionality. No, notice that this code fragment, this code fragment, this code fragment, this code fragment is just the same. We're printing the string here. So we're saying, why can we not just implement a procedure that does this, just as an example, right? Um, so a procedure will just print strings. Sir. Something else, that, yes, sir? Why don't we get like, everything, including the logic needed into the zero device in this case? Why don't we? Because we don't have the logic needed into the zero Yes. This? <laughs> uh, you could, I guess. You could. Yes, you could make a procedure that's, that, that kind of reads an integer. So you have jump and link read integer as your procedure. You can. I'm just using two examples here where we are printing a string and also exiting the label. But you can. Nice cut. What, what he's asking is that because code common fragments here between lines number, in line number 24, 25, and uh, is it 15 and, I don't know, 16 or something, these are the same? Why, why can we not do the same thing we are doing here? Yes, we can. Okay, so, but in this example, we're just looking at printing a string and exiting as well. So we can convert these three code fragments here into, we can encapsulate the code here into a procedure, right? Um, Right, so uh, effectively what you'd be doing is in all these uh, labeled parts here, you'd just have jump and link statements linking to the name of the procedure applicable to the code fragment. So in this case, the procedure for printing the string, in this case, the procedure for exiting. Right, yeah. Yes? How many procedures can be presented by jump and link? It's one. You jump, the format of the instruction is jump and link the name of the label, which is the label address. So it's just one. So you can only link to one address. Uh, I mean, one, one label, one procedure. Which makes sense, actually. Yes? Is it one label at a time, or one label at a time? No, at a time. You see, you can write a very long program, complex program, that has maybe 10,000 lines of code. And within that, those 10,000 lines of code, it's highly likely that you might have maybe 50 procedures doing different things. <coughs> You can have 50 jump and links, so 50 or more jump and links, referring to those 50 procedures you'd have defined. Right, so an example of uh, the, the, so what we've done is, uh, we're saying this part here, this part, this part, and this part, we're gonna convert them into what we're seeing in line number, in line number 42 up to 45. And I'll just switch to, if we go to line number 42 up to 45, you notice that we have uh, this code snippet here where all we are saying is, uh, all we are saying in 42 to, to 45 is we are going to uh, make use of system call code number four and then um, uh, issue this call here and then jump registers to I. You notice something very peculiar here, right? The, there's a part that's missing. Because when you're invoking a procedure, sometimes if you take an argument, you have to specify an argument to the procedure. 
you, you're doing this when you're evoking it, which is why, observe, in parts where we are evoking jump and link print string procedure, we have, right before that, we have the load address into A0. So we are loading the address of the string we wish to print into A0, and then we evoke the procedure. And this, is, this is why, this is what makes uh, implementation of print, print string procedure flexible, I guess. Is this, is this making sense? 